Thunderbolt, also known as P-47 Freedom Fighter, is a 1988 shooter from Jellico. And in typical Jellico style, it's so wrong yet enjoyable. For a start, the graphics are nothing special for an arcade game made in 1988. The scrolling on stage 2 is awful, the music while pretty catchy is totally unsuitable for the game, bosses don't have any indication that they are being damaged, such as a life bar or flashing when taking damage, and the powered ups are pretty awful, with your main weapon remaining the same throughout the game. Yet, despite all of these flaws, P47 is still an enjoyable diversion, even though there are so many better games like it out there. It's going to be interesting to see how the ports stack up. Now I must apologise for my game playing skills here as they suck, because I had to play via the keyboard. But what doesn't suck is this port. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. This ST port is playable in both 50 and 60Hz modes, and runs beautifully in 60Hz, which you are seeing right now. Plenty of parallax scrolling, loads of action on screen, and very little in the way of slowdown. This port also contains all of the bomb power ups and basic enemy patterns too. Now if only I could get my joystick to work with it. Unbelievable, the Amiga port is actually smooth and better than the ST. They both look pretty much the same, they both scroll smoothly with parallax scrolling, and they're both simultaneous two player games. So why is the Amiga version better? Well, simply because it actually has different music for each stage unlike the ST game. 
Sure, some of them are out of tune and they differ from the arcade game, but the fact that they are there is something of a celebration. A great port. In a way, this MS-DOS port is rather disappointing due to it having only PC speaker audio for the title screen and no sound at all in-game. The colours are also lacking. Surely VGA would have been an option. Still, it is smooth once you find the correct setting for your machine and it does contain everything that you'd expect. Let's move on to the only console port which appeared on the NEC PC Engine. The first thing you'll notice about this port is that Stage 1 is completely different. Why is a mystery. Maybe the developers at ICOM didn't like the arcade's original first stage. You'll also notice that the in-between stage images are missing from this port. Still, what is impressive is the fact that ICOM have gone to the trouble of keeping parallax scrolling and the arcade's music. Normally being the strongest of the 8-bit home computers when it comes to scrolling shooters, we'll start with the Commodore 64 port. As you can see, it does resemble the arcade game fairly well, and even plays like it with two players, if you should wish. The problem is that the game is a little slow paced, resulting in levels taking longer than they should. It's by no means a bad port, just one that needs a little more attention to speed.
Starting off with some pretty cool music and continuing with pretty nice graphics, this ZX Spectrum port of P47 looks to be another great port. And in a way, it is. The problem lies with how easy this port is. Even with some objects blending in with the background, it doesn't pack a challenge. Plus the lack of music and farting sound effects do not enhance the action. Still, I wouldn't say this is a bad port at all. Just one that needs some rocking tunes while you play. we finish up with the Amstrad CPC port. Is it any good? Meh, it's okay. What did impress was the lack of slowdown. Even when the screen was jam packed, the game kept scrolling at the same rate. Yes, it wasn't truly smooth, but it was acceptable. Sadly, the lack of game music and horrible sound effects make this as much fun as the specy version. Let's take a look at all those versions of P47 Thunderbolts running side by side. 